Universal Governance and Management System 7 presents The U.S. Constitution and the Great Law of Peace The Influence of American Natives Based on Gregory Schaff's book by the same name The first inhabitants of the American continent came from Asia through the Bering Strait. Paleo-Indians are believed to be the first humans to populate the Americas around the year 10,000 before Christ. During the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries, there were many Spanish and French explorers in North America. Some wrote about the lifestyle of the natives in America, and their findings reached Europe. Among those findings was the Great Law of Peace. This was the oral constitution of the Haudenosaunee, or Iroquois, and it was recorded on wampum belts. It dates back to perhaps the year 1190, and it was given to them by a prophet by the name of the Peacemaker. Now Hiawatha was an ambassador to the law who convinced the original five nations to secure peace instead of making war. The nations that constituted the Iroquois Confederation were the Mohawk, the Onondaga, Oneida, Cayuga, Seneca, and Later, the Tuscarora joined them. These tribes, these nations, lived close to the Great Lakes in what is now the state of New York. John Locke, the British philosopher, was influenced by the lifestyle of American natives. He wrote about man in the state of nature. He said, where men are completely equal, natural law regulates. Also, the state of nature has law of nature to govern it, which obliged everybody. News about the Iroquois also reached the French intellectuals who were critical of the French monarchy. The ideas of the Iroquois, says Donald Grindle Jr., influenced the thinking of the English and French theorists of the 18th century also. Voltaire, Diderot, Montesquieu, French encyclopedists in 1751 were the brains behind the revolutionary ideas that 20 years later, in 1791, started the French Revolution, which was based on three main ideas, liberty, equality, and fraternity. These translate into political freedom and autonomy. The founding fathers of the United States were also influenced by the European intellectuals. But on the other hand, they also had direct contact with their source, the chiefs and members of the Iroquois Confederacy. This relationship had been going on for many years. For instance, Benjamin Franklin's Albany Plan of the Union has elements of the Iroquois political structure. Now I present the researcher. He found a chest containing a treasure. Gregory Shaft, then a young historian, was led to a chest full of papers documenting the exchanges between the Iroquois and some of the founding fathers of the United States. I talked to him and he explained to me the testimony he gave in the U.S. Senate. Here is a quote during his testimony before Senator Inouye from Hawaii. I started researching the history of the Confederacy and its relationship with the United States government 11 years ago 
when I discovered a collection of unpublished original documents known as the Morgan Papers. These included letters hitherto unknown, which had been written by George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, John Hancock, as well as documents related to Benjamin Franklin, Patrick Henry, and also the personal journal of George Morgan, who was one of the first Indian agents before the Continental Congress, and who helped negotiate the first peace treaty between the Indians and the United States in 1776. I continue quoting Gregory. He said, I kept a record of the time invested in my research on this subject, he told the Congressional Committee, which is before the committee today. A few years ago, I reached 10,000 hours and stopped counting. The evidence is overwhelming. I swear to you, leader, I swear to the American people, I swear to the peoples of the world that the evidence that supports the Congressional Resolution 76 is overwhelming. I have submitted about 75 pages of written testimony, but I could have submitted thousands upon thousands of pages. Here is the 100th Congress resolution recognizing the contribution of the Iroquois to the United States Constitution. Now let's look at some of the contributions from the Iroquois to the United States of America. First of all, I would say is the importance of unity of the 13 colonies later included in the seal of the United States. In its clause, there is an olive branch that represents the tree as a symbol of peace. These arrows are also between his claws and part of what the peacemaker did was to say that each nation was represented by an arrow and that one single arrow could be easily broken, but not the set of five United Nations represented by the five arrows. Now seen here, in the seal of the United States, there are 13 arrows, copying the idea of the Iroquois, in this case, one arrow representing one colony. The next contribution has to be the idea of personal liberty which was incorporated into the Declaration of Independence. And later, in the U.S. Constitution, it was included as its preeminent guiding principle. The Constitution of the United States, in fact, is about setting limits to the power of the government. Other valuable contributions from the Iroquois were the idea that leaders act as servants of the people, not their masters. They also upheld freedom of expression in political and religious matters and forbade the unauthorized entry of homes. More surprising, however, is the contribution about the separation of powers. The Iroquois had a council of the Great Fire that had a bicameral structure and had a chief presiding, and then the Women's Council took the role of the protector of the great law of peace, much as the Supreme Court does in the United States with regards to the Constitution. The Iroquois had also mastered the idea of the checks and balances represented by the opposing forces of a bicameral legislative body. Also present in the great law of peace is veto power. The U.S. Constitution has a veto power that is very much like the one established in the great law of peace for making and approving laws and regulations. 
The fire keepers had the power to veto any decision that the lower levels made just as the president does in our government. Finally, in general, Ben Franklin and the Founding Fathers had such a deep respect for indigenous teachings that they saw them as mirroring the Christian teachings in the New Testament. Thank you.